Great are thy tender mercies, O Lord. Quicken me according to thy judgments. Many are my persecutors and mine enemies, yet do I not decline from thy testimonies. I beheld the transgressors and was grieved because they kept not thy word. Consider how I love thy precepts. Quicken me, O Lord, according to thy loving kindness. Thy word is true from the beginning, and every one of thy righteous judgments endured forever. Tonight's reading came from Psalms 119, verses 156 through 160. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you for that Psalms, brother. Yes, and sir. just like you read in there, I beheld the transgressors and they keep not his word. Okay. That's right. So once again, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, family. And uh, we want to welcome everybody to another episode of Let Us Reason Get a Broadcast. Uh, and we ask you to like, subscribe, and share, share, share this uh, tonight's lesson. And we want to thank you uh, again for tuning in and being faithful viewers of this show. Reading for us tonight is my brother Todd from the Israel of God in Baton Rouge, and uh, my name is Brother James, and I'm at the Israel of God in the Bay Area. <clears throat> uh, our co-host, Brother Kevin, uh, won't be with us tonight. He should be back next Friday. Uh, he's still trying to get up to 100%. I just spoke to the brother. He tells me to tell you all that he said hello and he missed being with you guys on uh, bringing the Sabbath in with you. And uh, remember the brother, keep him in your prayers, okay? So um, as uh, we can see, let me see. Let's pull up this title. Here's the title. Can you read what you believe? Hmm. Now, that's the question. And I had two encounters over the past couple of weeks that moved me to do this lesson with this title. Uh, I had an experience with two different individuals. One individual went to an Israel of God in the city that they live in. And then, of course, they are familiar. They visited, okay? And, of mm -hmm. course, they are familiar with other churches. And, uh, and made the comment, it's amazing how people have the same Bible but do different things, okay? And so my question was, even though I did not get an answer, mm -hmm. my question was, what is it that you see in your opinion from what you see is different? Right, right. Like, like, like what are they doing different, <laughs> And, and I know what my answer is. The difference is one set of people follow the Bible. The other one follow traditions. Okay. Right. So, you know, that's what I see out here. Okay. So the other encounter I had, an, an individual that's a regular for years, been at Israel of God, has a child. The mm -hmm. child's grandparents are constantly trying to get that child to be involved and celebrate pagan holidays. Mm -hmm. And so as I spoke to this individual, I just simply said, look, and I'm telling all of you this right here. Yes, we have knowledge. Yes, we have run into a whole lot of knowledge, okay? But that doesn't mean that we are always the ones that have to prove something. Right. So since we have this knowledge, we eagerly want to show it off. But my suggestion to that person was this right here. You just tell them if they can show you Christmas, celebrate Jesus' birthday, December 25th, put a Christmas tree up in your house. If they can show you any of that, you'll have no problem 
letting your child celebrate it with them. In fact, you'll come over and celebrate it with them. Mm -hmm. So the one way that a teacher or a professor is going to find out whether or not the students have knowledge, they give them a quiz, right, Brother Todd? That's right. See, a lot of y'all probably don't know Brother Todd is a principal. He's an educator. So teachers... Uh, they give quiz and tests. So why don't you give the people a quiz or a test? Say, look, you show me what you do in the Bible. You right. show me why you go every Sunday. You show me why your religion is called Methodist in the Bible. Mm -hmm. You show me why you celebrate Christmas and why your children hunt eggs on Easter. You show me that, I will leave the Israel of God and come over there with you and do everything y'all doing. Hmm. But just show it to me. So sometimes, brothers and sisters, put put that burden of proof on these people. Put the burden of proof on them to prove what they do to you. We don't have to prove everything. And that's why this lesson is titled, Can You Read What You Believe? So we're going to dive into this lesson tonight. And we're going to be asking these questions. We we have a lot of questions. We got a couple of pictures to show y'all. Okay. So get ready to do your screenshot. Okay. So we're going to start a lesson in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Okay. That's where we start. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. We just want one verse. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. And we just want one verse there. Okay. Let me see here. I got a little something, something going on on my screen. Right. First Thessalonians 5, and we just want one verse, brother Todd. We want verse 21, my brother. What does it say? Verse 21, what does it say? Prove all things. Mm -hmm. Hold fast that which is good. Mm -hmm. You see that? So look. So I went there to say one thing. The book says prove all things. If you go to church every Sunday, or if you believe that that's the day you're supposed to go on, you should be able to read that to me. Yes, sir. You should be able to go in there and read it to me. See, I can read you every Sabbath. As a matter of fact, let's go look at some of it. Let's go. Let's go to Genesis chapter 2. Whatever it is you're doing, whatever it is you believe, you should be able to prove it. Paul told you. We just read it. He said, prove all things, okay? And so you should be able to prove to me something that you're doing. I mean, after all, you doing it. Why you can't prove it to me? So let me get some of these comments off the screen. I'm going to get this. Uh, I'm going to get our title up here so you guys can see it. That's our title for today, okay? We just read 1 Thessalonians 5 and 21. Now, let's go hit this Genesis chapter 2, brother. Genesis 2. So, prove all things. You prove Sunday to me. I'm about to show you the Sabbath. And then after I show you the Sabbath, we're going to go to the scriptures where the people that believe Sunday is a day. We have to hit some of the verses they hit, don't we, brother Todd? Yes, sir. Gotta go we got to hit some of them. We got to go some of the places they go. So Genesis 2, pick it up at verse 1, my brother, 2 and 1. Go ahead and read it. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, mm -hmm. and all the host of them. And on the seventh day, God ended his work, which mm -hmm. he had made. Mm -hmm. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had made. So twice we see already he said he finished on the seventh day. He rested on the seventh day. Go ahead and read. And God blessed the seventh day. He blessed the fourth day, Brother Todd. The seventh day. What about the first day, which is Sunday? Seventh day, my brother. He blessed that seventh day, and that is it. And that is all. Go ahead and read. And sanctified. And said it, he set that day apart. He set it apart. Go ahead and read. Because that in it, mm -hmm. he had rested from all his work, which God created and made. Okay, so he rested. He made a day for you to rest, and you got a weekly day for you to have your rest, okay? Because it represents something. But now, let's go to Acts chapter 17, because we could go to Luke chapter 4 and show you where Jesus went to the synagogue every Sabbath day. 
Because somebody might be saying, well, Brother James, you know, you done read over in Genesis in the Old Testament. We don't deal with that no more. Really? So let's go look at a time where Jesus is dead and gone, okay? Let's go Acts chapter 2, brother. We just, I mean, Acts chapter 17. We just want one verse, Brother Todd. 17 and 2, and let's look at Paul. This is years after the death of Jesus, and let's see if he got changed to Sunday. Go ahead and read it, brother. And Paul, as his manner was, went in unto them, and three Sabbath days reasoned with them out of the Scriptures. So three straight Sabbath days, Paul reasoned with them out of the Scripture. It didn't say he went on Sunday. It didn't say he went on the first day of the week. It said he went on the Sabbath day, which we just read in Genesis, is the seventh day of the week. He went three Sabbaths in a row. So if a person say, Brother James, why you go to the church on Saturday, the seventh day of the week? I can open my book and read that. Can you read Sunday to me? They cannot. I'm going to be asking that question because I hope some, some Sunday goers are on here because we are trying to encourage you to investigate the things that you participate in. We want to encourage you to not take our word. Do your own research. Get your book open. Read along with us. We do not have tricked out Bibles with 26 inch spinning rims on them. <laughs> we got the straight King James and we read straight from the book. Okay. So get your book out. Read along with us because yours say what I would say. Right. So now let's go Acts 18, Brother Todd. Let's go to the 18th chapter. Unless we're going to hit verse 1, then we're going to hit verse 4. Now, this is years after the death of Jesus. And this is why I can say uh, with the surety why I go and have a holy convocation on the Sabbath day like we were instructed in Leviticus 23, like Jesus showed us as an example that we can read in Luke chapter 4. You're supposed to do this every Sabbath day. Not some of them, every one of them. Okay? 18 and 1. Brother, what did it say? After these things. Paul departed from Athens and came to Corinth. So look, go to uh, skip down to verse 4 and continue. And he reasoned in the synagogue every Sabbath. When, Brother Todd? Every Sabbath. He reasoned every Sabbath. And I can tell you for a fact, you're going to catch Brother Todd at the Israel of God every Sabbath. And you're going to catch me at one every Sabbath day. Okay? I look forward to it, brother. Yes, sir. Okay, so look. So Paul reasoned every Sabbath. What did he do, brother? And persuaded the Jews and the Greeks. Yes, sir. So again, I can read about the Sabbath day. I can read it. That's why I do it. Can you read what you do? That is the question at hand tonight. Can you read the things you believe? So look, let's go in here, Deuteronomy chapter 17, because the whole thing is this world is caught up in traditions. They are caught up into what their parents gave them that's been handed down from generation to generation. But that is not good enough, okay? Jesus told you flat out why you break the commandments with your traditions, okay? I think we're going to read that tonight. So look, Deuteronomy 17, and the Lord warned Israel. 17 and 1, brother, what does it say? Thou shalt not sacrifice unto the Lord thy God any bullock or sheep wherein is blemished. Or any evil favoredness, but that is an abomination unto the Lord thy God. See, this is what we have to really understand about the Almighty God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Once He give a commandment, we don't have the latitude to put our own thought process into it and start changing stuff around. He said, "Don't bring any sacrifice to Him with blemishes." And then you can go read in Malachi and other places that Israel did that. And the Lord called that an abomination. You can't do stuff how you feel like doing it. You can't reason with it. You can't look at reasons and say, oh, well, this is going on, so I can't come to class. Man, if you have the ability to go to class and have that holy convocation, I advise you get there, sister and brother. But go ahead and read, brother. If there be found among you within any of thy gates, which the Lord thy God giveth thee, Mm -hmm. Man or woman that have wrought wickedness in the sight of the Lord thy God in transgressing his covenant. So now you see what wickedness is. Wickedness is transgressing the covenant. Transgressing the covenant is simply breaking the commandment. So when you break any of them commandments, it's wickedness. Plain and simple. Go ahead and read. 
and have gone and served other gods. Gone and did what? And served other gods. Oh, so that's our problem right there. Go ahead and read. And worship them. Uh huh. Either the sun. Or and so they worship. So they worship in the sun. They worship in the moon. Go ahead and read. Or any of the host of heaven, mm -hmm. which I have not commanded. See, here's the problem: people worshiping these sun gods, Mithras, Rimfan, Molech, Ishtar, Astarte, Ashtoreth, Nimrod. Listen, a lot of them are spinoffs of Nimrod and his old lady. And you got the sun and the moon and all this stuff that's up in the skies that people are really worshiping. And that's why you in church on Sunday. You sun worshiping on the day of sun worship on Sunday. The Bible never told you to have a holy convocation every Sunday, nor did it ever say have one every first day of the week. Can you read what you doing in this Bible? OK, so now we see that the Lord don't want you worshiping the sun. Right. Go ahead. And one more verse. Bro. I mean, go well, continue, brother. And it be told thee and mm -hmm. thou hast heard of it and inquired diligently and behold, it be true. And mm -hmm. the thing is that such abomination is wrought in Israel. Uh huh. Then shall thou bring forth that man or that woman which have committed that wicked thing unto thy gates, mm -hmm. even that man or that woman. And shall stone them with stones till they die. See, this is how serious the Lord was about Israel turning to that sun god worship. Which when you when you run up in there on Sunday, that's all you doing. And when you and when you line up all the sun gods and you pull all of their masks and disguises off, guess who's standing right there behind them? Satan the devil. He is the one behind every last one of them getting you to do the opposite of what the Bible say or getting you to do something different from what the Bible say and making you feel OK and good about it. Right. Go ahead and read, brother. At the mouth of two witnesses or three witnesses, shall he that is worthy of death be put to death? Mm -hmm. But at the mouth of one witness. He shall not be put to death. OK, I'm just showing you that that sun worship was a thing then and it's still a thing right now. And that's why they doing this Sunday stuff. Let's go hit Jeremiah chapter 10 and let's pick it up at verse two. Let's go Jeremiah 10 and two. We're going to show you all of this stuff. And you know what? We could do this lesson right here for we could do about an eight hour lesson on, on, on this kind of stuff. Because mm -hmm. we we can look at all the stuff that these people do that they can't read it nowhere. We can look at uh, having crosses around your chain and, and, and all over your house and all over your car. Mm -hmm. We can look at God love everybody. Right. We can look at Easter. We can look at Christmas. We can look at you can eat whatever you want to. We can look at all these things that these people who call themselves Christians are doing we can look at all these things they believe and we can we can we can have an eight hour lesson showing you ain't none of it in the book and we can show you the opposite of what they do and believe is actually written in these pages right here that's right we can do an eight hour lesson on that hmm. okay so um let's press let's press on jeremiah 10 and 2 my brother 10 and 2 go ahead and read it thus said the lord Mm -hmm. Learn not the way of the heathen and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven. Yes. But the heathen are dismayed at them. You see that? See, he said, don't be dismayed at the signs of heaven and nothing else in the heavens. Because the heathens, they're dismayed at the at the stars and the moon and the sun and lights. They love lights. I mean, after Christmas is over, man, it'll be February the 15th. Them Christmas lights still up. You hear what I'm saying? <laughs> I mean, them Christmas like the people are dismayed at the signs of heaven. OK, but go ahead and read, brother. For the customs of the people are vain. I mean, worthless customs they have. Let's look at one of them. Go ahead. For one cut of the tree out of the forest. Yep. The work of the hands of the workmen with the axe. Mm hmm. They deck it with silver and with gold. And they deck that tree. With silver, they deck it with gold. They put little angels on top. They put stars on top. They do. They put 
uh, 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 candy canes, popcorn, all every little colored ball that represent all the precious stones of the earth on the tree. Just like it says in a description of Satan, the tree of knowledge, good and evil, just like it says about him in Ezekiel chapter 28. But go ahead and read, brother. They fastened it with nails and with hammers. Yep. That it, that it moved not. And I'm going to tell y'all something. We talking Christmas tree right here. The Lord say don't put that thing in your house. But we can read that. That's why we don't do it. I'm reading it to you. Why are you still doing it? Oh, you say, oh, that was just for Israel only. Man, you tripping. Whatever God gave Israel, they were supposed to go give it to the rest of the world. That's right. why Jesus came out in Matthew 28 and told them Israelite brothers to go and teach all nations. If you go read it in Mark 16, chapter, he said, go teach every creature. And then he said, teach them everything. Teach them to observe everything that I've taught you. So everything he gave them, it was for the whole world. So you right. can't just say it was just for them. Right, brother Todd? So look. I want y'all to pay attention while I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to show this image to y'all. I'm going to put up this uh this picture out of the last two million years. Brother Todd, can you read that that them, them two things? It's the yeah. bottom of the page, 59. But listen, brothers and sisters, Jeremiah wrote this thing about the Christmas tree at least 700 years before Jesus was born through Mary, okay? Which tells us that the people was already doing the stuff with the Yule Tide laws and the Winter Soul Stice Festival, which they call today Christmas. Okay, so they were he was they was already doing it. So, so it tells you right there that Jesus had nothing to do with Christmas. He has nothing to do with a Christmas tree. So why are you doing it? So look at this here. This is page 59. Let me move Let me move this, this verse out of the way. This is page 59 out of the last two million years. Brother Todd is going to read that bottom to y'all. What that say, brother? The Ishtar Gate. Entrance to Nebuchadnezzar's capital on the Euphrates. Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylonia from 605 to 562 B.C., was a tireless builder who made Babylon the most splendid city of its time. Of eight gateways in the massive walls, each sacred to a different god. To a, wait a minute, wait a minute. Each one of them walls was to what, brother? To a different god. I mean, they had multiple gods, them Gentiles. Go ahead and read, brother. The most imposing was the huge Ishtar Gate, built in honor of the Babylonian goddess of love and battle. See, listen, she, in Babylon, she was called Ishtar. In other countries, she was called Astarte. In other countries, she was called Ashtoreth. And she's got several names throughout all the countries. She's the goddess of war, goddess of fertility, and a few other things, too. But it comes down to today, She this is, this is where Easter comes from, brothers and sisters. That's what the eggs and the rabbits are about. She's one of those sun goddesses. And then it said not only did he have her, he had all them other gods up there too. But go ahead and continue, brother. And rising 50 feet above a sacred procession away in Babylon. This reconstruction of the gate now stands in the Pergamon Museum in Berlin. The yes. Walls, the walls of the flanking towers were clad from top to bottom in glazed blue bricks which were decorated with yellow and white reliefs of dragons, mm -hmm. symbols of the Babylonian chief god, Marduk, and bulls, symbols of the lightning god, Adad, baked bricks, cement. Hold on, hold on. Did you see that god, Marduk? Hey, man, listen, Egypt had a bunch of different gods, and these other nations just picking them up. But go ahead and read, brother. Baked bricks. Cement and into bitumen formed a solid core for the wall. Yes. And the foundations went down as deep as the wall was high. Mm. Overlooking the Ishtar Gate rose the famous hanging gardens. Underground chambers found this century probably housed mechanism for raising water to the gardens. That's good, my brother. I just I just wanted to point out that they got pictures of these gods and goddesses, and that's what them Gentiles did, and they passed them customs down to to look. The, listen, the Gentiles are the students, okay? And we, as the chosen priests of God, the professors, the lawyers, 
Esquire, if you will. We, instead of us having using the autonomy that we had on his word, we chose to sin against our God. And he kicked us out of our homeland and he scattered us to them nations serving these nations. And of course, they gave us their names. They gave us their languages and they gave us their gods and they gave us the traditions that came along with all them sun gods, including Sunday as one of them traditions. And we think it's right just because mama gave it to me because because right. Paul Paul gave it to mama. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That does not make it right can you read what you believe can you read what you do that's what it's gonna boil down to and i'm telling you right now if you choose tradition over truth you must love fire so look let's press on brother todd let's go to our next spot because let's go to first corinthians we just showed you how nebuchadnezzar had all them gods up there. But Paul told you flat out in 1 Corinthians 10 who them Gentiles worship and who they sacrificed to and who they was dealing with. 1 Corinthians 10 and 20. What does it say, brother? But I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice Mm -hmm. They sacrifice to devils and not they, to God. You see that, sisters and brothers? They sacrifice to devils because, as I said earlier, when you pull the mask off of every one of them sun gods that you serving on Sunday, when you pull the mask off every last one of them, Satan's standing right behind them okay so you you sacrificing and you serving and you Christmasing and you Eastering to devils go ahead and read brother and I would not that she should have fellowship with devils why is that brother you cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils mm -hmm. you cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and of the table of devils one more verse do we provoke the Lord to jealousy are we stronger than he? And I'm letting you know now, you do provoke him to jealousy. I'm telling you right now that you do provoke him to jealousy when you get off into serving all of these false gods. Let's press on. Let's look at something, brother. Let's go 1 Kings chapter 11. 1 Kings chapter 11, brother Todd. Mm -hmm. We're going to look at something else, too. Because that's the question. That's the question at hand. Can you read what you believe? And I'm telling you something. We all, you know, th this is one of these sayings everybody likes to say. My mama didn't raise no fools. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. Did she? Are you looking at this Bible and tossing it behind you? In choosing tradition over truth. Because what do you call a person that turned their back on the truth, brother? What do you call a person that even knows some truth but don't walk in it? Is that wisdom? Mm -hmm. First Kings 11, 31. You right, brother. First Kings 11 and 31. Go ahead and read it. What did it say? And he said to Jeroboam, mm -hmm. Take me ten pieces, for thus said the Lord, the mm -hmm. God of Israel, mm -hmm. behold, I will rend the kingdom out of the hand of Solomon and will give 10 tribes to thee. Yes. But he shall have one tribe for my servant David's sake mm -hmm. and for Jerusalem's sake. See, so listen, the Lord ripped the kingdom, control of the kingdom from the tribe of Judah because, you know, he took it from Saul, who was a Benjamite. He gave it to David, who's from the tribe of Judah, David's son, Solomon. Also, tribe of Judah took over, but the Lord ripped it out of Solomon's hand. And so he said, I'm just going to let you rule over your family, Judah, and I'm going to get the other families, uh, you know, mm -hmm. to, 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 uh, to Ephraim and Manasseh. OK, so look, go ahead and continue the city which I have chosen out of all the tribes of Israel. Why did he do that, brother? Because that they have forsaken me mm -hmm. and have worshipped Ashtoreth, the goddess of the Zidonians. Mm hmm. Emosh, the god of the Moabites, mm -hmm. and Milcom, the god of the children of Ammon, and have not walked in my ways to do that which is right in mine eyes, mm -hmm. and to keep my statutes and my judgments, as did David his father. See, that's why he ripped the kingdom from him, because 
he was dealing with I got Ashtoreth right here, Chemosh, and Milcom. These all these other gods. But Solomon knew that the only God was the God of Israel. Ain't but one God. It's one spirit, one word, one faith, one baptism, one God, brothers and sisters. All these religions is a bunch of folly. How you gonna have one God in all these lined up ways to serve him? Hmm. If, if, if you believe that, man, I don't know what to say about you. So look, so we see that this happened, right? And and, and, and when we read about uh, uh, one of them gods that uh, Nebuchadnezzar had up there, Ishtar, it's the same as Ashtoreth, the one, uh, uh, the one that Solomon was dealing with right here. So now let's go to Acts chapter 20. So, so um, I just went there to show you that it, it has been about these sun gods for a long time. That's why they do Easter on, or, or they do a sunrise service. They actually do a sunrise service, brothers and sisters. But when you go to John chapter 20, you see that it was still dark. Matter of fact, let's go there real quick, brother Todd. Let's go there. Let's let's read that. I didn't I didn't put it in here, but let's just go to John 20 real quick, because I want to show you that uh, one a lot of them reasons that they say they they celebrate everything and they go to church on Sunday. They say because Jesus rose on the Sunday. They say he rose that early Sunday morning at sunrise. Don't they say that, brother? That's what they say. They say he died on Good Friday and rose on Sunday morning. I don't know what kind of math they use because he told you in math in Matthew 12 and 40 that he was going to be in the three grave days, for three days and three, and three nights. nights. That's right. I don't know how you get that, how you get Sunday morning from Friday night. But John chapter 20, my brother, let's pick it up at that first verse. Read that first verse. What does it say? The first day of the week cometh Mary Magdalene early yeah. when, it, when it was yet dark unto the sepulcher and uh -huh. see the Stone taken away from the sepulchre. Mm -hmm. You see that? So she see the stone taken away. Skip down to verse 11 and continue. But Mary stood without at the sepulchre weeping. Mm -hmm. And as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the sepulchre. So look, and look, look, brothers and sisters. I want to point out that they said it was still dark when she went there. But he was gone. So where is your sunrise rising at? Why do you have a sunrise service on Easter to have your so-called celebration of the resurrection when the Bible never tell you to celebrate a resurrection? Look, can you read that? Can you read celebrate the resurrection of Jesus anywhere in the Bible? If you can, put it in the comment section so we can see it so we can go read it to the people. If you have that, put it over there so we can go read it. Celebrate the resurrection of Jesus. What verse is that so we can see it? So now, continue, my brother. And see it, two angels in the white in white city, the one at the head and the other at the feet, yep. where the body of Jesus had lain. Mm -hmm. And they say to her, woman, why weepest thou? Yeah. She said unto them, because they have taken away my Lord, mm -hmm. and I know not where they have laid him. And when she had thus said, she turned herself back and saw Jesus standing and yes. knew not that it was Jesus. Mm -hmm. Jesus said unto her, woman, why weepest thou? Mm -hmm. Whom speakest thou? Yes. She, supposing him to be the gardener, said unto him, sir, if thou have borne him hence, Tell me where thou hast laid him and I will take him away. See, look, I just went here to point out that it was still dark. But the people tell you the reason they do Sunday is because he rose on Sunday. And then they'll have a they'll have an Easter thing, a, a sunrise service. But the books say it was dark when she went out there and he was gone already. OK, now we know those of us with Bible knowledge and understanding of the word. We know that the first day of the week comes in. That is Sunday comes in when the sun go down Saturday. We all know that and understand that. OK, so we know that Jesus came out the grave, according to what he said, just before sundown on the Sabbath day, on a Saturday. So if they would have went out there at 10 o'clock at night, they would have found him gone. I don't know if it was 10, around midnight, 2 in the morning, 4 in the morning, but I do know this. It was still dark. So I don't know why you having a sunrise service. Oh, I know why. Because you worship sun gods on the first right. day of the week, Sunday, day of the sun. Okay. So now 
let's press on. Let's go to another spot they like to go. And there's this preacher down at this uh house in Dallas. This is where he likes to go, Acts chapter 20. Mm-hmm. He loves to go right here, Brother Todd. But let's go see if it's there. Okay? We go in Acts chapter 20. And we're going to pick it up at verse 7. We just want one verse. Because they say this is where the Sabbath day got changed right here. 20 and verse 7, my brother. What does it say? And upon the first day of the week, Mm -hmm. when the disciples came together to break bread. Yeah. Paul preached unto them, ready to depart on the morrow, and continued his speech until midnight. Okay, so look, brothers and sisters. If it's the first day of the week, like I just said, you it just got dark because the sun just went down Saturday. And it said he preached in, to them to them brothers until midnight. Now, it's more likely that he started at sundown when you went into the first day of the week and he went until midnight than, uh, than, 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 than in the morning to midnight. You understand what I'm saying? Right. But anyway, Brother Todd, I want you to read that verse one more time. What did it say? And up on the first day of the week, mm-hmm. when the disciples came together to break bread. Now, let me say this, brothers and sisters. You can use break bread, that term, for whatever you want to use it for. But according to the Bible, it just means you was eating, you was breaking up bread and eating it. Plain and simple. You can call it whatever you want to call it, but I'm showing you what the Lord used it for. So they was eating. Go ahead and read. Paul preached unto them. Ready to the depart on the morrow mm-hmm. and continued his speech until midnight. Now, the reason we went here because these people that worship on Sunday, they say this is where the Sabbath day got changed. Okay. First of all, oh. Brother Todd, you read that verse, right? Everybody out there heard you read it. We didn't see the word yeah. Sabbath nowhere in that verse, did we? No, didn't read that. What about the word change? But I didn't see change in there either. What about change my mind? Didn't read that, brother. You see what I'm saying, brother? See, they go to these verses and they'll say, this is why I'm taking you there. You taking me there. But what you saying is there is not there. I don't see nowhere in this verse where the Sabbath day got changed. All I see is on the first day of the week, Paul preached to the brothers and they was eating. That's it. And I would bet my money that Paul preached to somebody every day. Just like me and you are running to somebody no matter what day of the week it is. If it if, if it's the moment for us to give them the word, we're going to give it up. Right. And if it takes us to sit down over some blueberry muffins, then we're going to break some bread while we yeah. chop up the book. Okay. Yes, sir. So so people go to that verse, brother, uh, and, and, and they wrap it around breaking bread. But let's go to Acts chapter 2 and look at some just so we can prove to you what breaking bread is about. Okay. Acts chapter 2, my brother. Let's pick it up at verse 41. 2 and 41. The title is, can you read what you believe? Can you read what you do? So I'm telling you all and I'm suggesting to you. If you're having debates with people. If you're having your battles with people. You should just simply suggest to them. You show me. Why you do what you do in the Bible, and I'll come do it with you. And being that we know these things are not written therein, they'll probably leave you alone about it. Or they may take a hard look at it. Might might not be that day, might not be that same month, but somewhere down the line, they're going to look at that. Because who wants to walk around ignorant Mm -hmm. in all things? Some people do, but then again, some people don't. Some people like being able to prove what they do. Some people like understanding what they do. And when you come over here and when you get some Bible knowledge, we understand what we do. We know what we do and why we do it. And we can go to you and show it to you. Okay, so now, but we're going to turn the table on the folks. We're going to tell the people, you show me what you do. You show it to me. I ain't going to show you nothing. You show me how you get down. And if you prove it to me, I'm going to come over there with you. You want me to come out of the Israel of God and come to the old Mount Nebo Baptist uh, Pilgrimage Church? I'm going to come over there. Okay? But you got to show it to me, though. Let's go, Brother Todd. 2 and 41. What did it say? 
Then they that gladly received his word mm -hmm. were baptized. And the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. Go ahead. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine, fellowship, mm -hmm. and in breaking of bread and in prayer. And they were eating and praying and reading the Bible and teaching the people. Skip down to 46 and continue. And they continuing daily with one accord in the temple. Wait a minute. They continue how often? Daily, brother. Mm -hmm. With one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house. So guess what, brothers and sisters? Don't take me to Acts chapter 20 and verse 7 talking about because Paul broke bread that the Sabbath day. It said they broke bread daily right here. Because it means they were simply eating every day. And don't you have to eat every day, Brother Todd? Yes, sir. Except the Day of Atonement. Atonement, yeah. So look, so, but go ahead and continue, brother. <laughs> Did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. Mm -hmm. And the Lord added to the church daily, such as should be saved. He was adding to the church daily because they was teaching daily and they was breaking bread daily, okay? The Sabbath day didn't change in Acts 20 and 7. Your preacher told you that. You want to believe that, but you're going to have to do better than that when you run up on somebody with some Bible knowledge, okay? So let's go Revelation 12 and 9. Because you have been deceived by Satan the devil if you run up in a church on Sunday. You have been deceived if you putting up a Christmas tree. And I don't know what to say if you hear this truth and you just simply decide you don't want to deal with it. Right. Oh, you know what they're saying, Brother James? Hold What's on. that? Let me, let me call my pastor real quick. Let me see. Call him. <laughs> call him. <laughs> call him. Hey, Brother Ty, you know, there's this little store. I don't know if you remember a couple of times a big a big brother came to class in Baton Rouge when we first started at the library. Uh, mm -hmm. called him Big Boy. He was bald-headed, and he and he wanted to wear that hat at the class because he said his, his head was cold. Right, right. But anyway, he used to hang out at, at this um at the gas station on North Street in North Foster. Okay. He used to hang out right about. there, and it'd be a bunch of people because guys guy was out there selling socks and DVDs and CDs. So I went out there, and uh, some dude was out there, and he wanted to call his pastor on the phone. Right. And he got the pastor on the phone. They put him on the speakerphone, so everybody huddled around so they can hear right. how it was going to go down. <laughs> and you know he got roasted and toasted, man. Yes, sir. He said, how long are you going to be out there? I said, I'll be out here however long you want me to stay out here. If you right. coming up here, I'll stay till you get here. Did the brother show up? No, he didn't show up. <laughs> you already know. So, but, but, but yeah, they will try to call their pastor. But aren't you tired of saying, let me ask my pastor? Right. See, when you come to the Israel of God, nine times out of 10, I'm going to say 9.5 times out of 10, if you have a Bible question, you could turn to the right or to the left, or tap the person in front of you, and they can ask, they can show you where to read your, your answer at to your question. Right. It's a, it, these are buildings full of people with knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. If you go into a church where your preacher is the only one who got some knowledge, mm -hmm. you're in the wrong place. Because in Jeremiah 3 and 15, it says, when the Lord going to send you a pastor according to his own heart, oh. and they going to feed you with knowledge and understanding. If you ain't getting no knowledge and no understanding, you're in the wrong place. Mm -hmm. And you ain't in front of a preacher that the Lord sent to you. It's all that simple. So now, let's press on, Brother Todd. Let's read Revelations 12 and 9. What did it say? And the great dragon was cast out. Mm -hmm. That old serpent called the devil and Satan, yes. which, which deceiveth the whole world. Just the people in Iowa. The whole world. Was Just deceived. the people in Canada, brother. Whole world. Listen, the whole world has been deceived, brothers and sisters. The book say that. If you believe the book, that's what that is. The question is, do you come out of? Do you come out of deception or not? Or do you stay over there? That's the question. And if you stay over there, please believe me, you will regret it. That day is coming. You're going to regret it. So now, let's go because it says Satan deceived the whole world. Right, Brother Todd? Right. 
So now let's go to Genesis because that's what this dude does. That's his job. He's the deceiver. He's the father of lies. He has fed y'all Sunday, going to heaven. Jesus love everybody. You don't have to keep the law. And you just land back doing whatever you want to do. Because you don't want anybody having domain over you and laying rules and statutes and judgments and commandments in front of you. You're offended with that. Okay, Genesis 3 and 1, my brother, 3 and 1, because this guy is a deceiver. It said he weakened the nations. How did he weaken the nations? By lying to them and deceiving them. Got them with a false sense of security, thinking they have something that they ain't even close to having. Genesis 3 and 1, my brother, what did it say? Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, mm -hmm. which the Lord God had made. Yes. And, he, and he said unto the woman, Mm -hmm. Yeah, have God said, you should not eat of every tree of the garden. Yes. And the woman said unto the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. Mm -hmm. But of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat of it. Neither yes. shall you touch it, lest she die. What did he say to that? And the serpent said unto the woman, ye shall not surely die. Now, here's the question to our audience, brother. Is Eve dead? Is Eve dead? She, is. she real dead. So that Terry right there, he lied to her, but she bought the lie. Right. Eve is real dead right now, but he told her she wasn't going to surely die, and she bought it. So look, he's a deceiver. He's deceived the whole world. And as we can see right here in Genesis 3, he's been deceiving man from the beginning. He deceived you with Sunday and a bunch of other stuff. And, and, and have you noticed, Brother Todd, that every time you watch a, any kind of movie with gangsters and criminals, all of them got a cross on their chain, man. Right, right. <laughs> they all want to kiss it and raise it up. Every Woo! Time. <laughs> You can go out on the street and see the wicked, the wickedest, craziest cat out there cross on the chain, man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Everybody's been deceived. But look, let's go to Isaiah 14, my brother. Let's look at something else. Because this guy is a deceiver. And he's got everybody serving sun gods mm -hmm. on Sunday, the day of the sun. And they really serve in him, but they think they serve in Jesus. Right. But they, but he, so, huh? Uh, no, Go ahead, gonna, brother. They slide in so smooth and make it sound so good to you that you want to partake in it, you know? And people right. fall for it. Exactly. But Jesus told you the game, be wise as a serpent and harmless as a dove. Hey, that's how he roll and operate. He's right. wise as serpents and harmless as a dove. He he sprinkle sugar on it, pour a little honey on it, dress it up, make it shine, add a little bling to it, add a whole lot of freedom to it, mm -hmm. uh, add a whole lot of pleasing your flesh to it. And it's all gravy, baby. Right. You buy into it. Hmm. So, so look, show you something else about this great deceiver, the father of lies, the accuser, because he accused you to the Lord every time he gets you to cut out a line and sway to the left or to the right to get you to get off your swell. He go snitch on you to the Lord. <laughs> this guy. But let's read some. Let's read something else about him. Isaiah 14 and 12. Brother, go ahead and read that. How thou, how, how are thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer? Yeah. Son of the morning. Yeah. How art thou cut down to the ground, which did weaken the nation? See that? See, he did weaken the nation. Go ahead and read. For thou hast said in thine heart, mm -hmm. I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. Mm -hmm. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. Mm -hmm. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. Mm -hmm. I will be like the most high. Listen. This is the only individual in this whole Bible that expressed a desire to go to heaven. When Isaiah 26, he talking about hiding in the dust. Job talking about hide me in the grave till your wrath be passed. Jesus in John 5, so he going to get the people that get in the kingdom out the grave. He's going to get the people that he's going to put in the fire out the grave. You see what I'm saying? So it's like everybody in the book talk like that. But you, but Satan, 
got you want to do what he wants to do, which is to go to heaven. So it's too many people buying into tradition. You're buying into things that sound good, but it ain't it ain't biblical. And you just following tradition and you in error. And Jesus told you, you do err not knowing the scriptures. So why are you going to a church where the preacher is the only one that know the word? Why you won't come over here where, where the 10 year olds can teach you something? You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So look, so look, so we're going to deal with this going to heaven thing. Let's go, John, and we're going to hit uh, chapter 3 and verse 13. Mm -hmm. We're going to put Jesus on the witness stand, and we're going to see if you can handle what he about to say. Can you handle what Jesus is about to say? Can you read to me what you believe? I can read what I believe. I believe that don't nobody go up to the heaven where the Father is. I believe that, and I'm about to read to you one of the reasons why. John 3 and 13, what that say, brother? And no man have ascended up to heaven. Mm -hmm. But he that came down from heaven, yes. even the son of man, which is in heaven. So what you going to do with that, Mr. Go to heaven, sister, go to heaven? What you going to do with that? Can you read what you believe? I'm reading to you what me and Brother Todd believe. We are reading it to you. Mm -hmm. Can you read what you believe? Show me somebody going to heaven. Oh, you know what, Brother Todd? They do talk about somebody going to heaven. And we going to go there, too. We have to, right? That's don't right. we have to go there brother Todd yes, we have sir. to go there if that's where they go so, but before we go there let's go to 1st Timothy chapter 6 because we got to give you a witness to what Jesus just said because the books are out of the mouth of two or three witnesses huh that's right Little we man. got to that's give you a family. witness yes sir 1st Timothy 6 let's pick it up my brother at verse uh, uh, 13 1 Timothy 6 and 13. Let's give them a witness to what Jesus said, and then we're going to hit some of them places where the go to heaven people likes to go, and we're going to see if it says that. Because we went to the places, some of the places where they say the Sabbath day got changed, and we didn't see nowhere where the Sabbath day got changed, did we? Did we Not see yet. anywhere where the Sabbath got changed? I haven't seen it. I hadn't read that, brother. See, look. If the Lord, we read where it says he blessed the seventh day. And then it said he sanctified that day. If he changed it, I got to have a verse that say he blessed the first day and he sanctified the first day. I got to read that to undo the other stuff that I read. That's how right. you undo it and reverse it. I got to read it clearly like I read the other thing clearly. Right. First Timothy 6 and 13, brother, go ahead and read it. I give thee charge in the sight of God, who yes. quickeneth all things and before Christ Jesus, mm -hmm. who before Pontius Pilate witnessed a good confession. Yes, sir. That thou keep this commandment without spot, mm -hmm. unrebukable unto the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. Which in his times he shall show who is the blessed and only potentate, the King of kings and Lord of lords. Who only have immortality. Right there, what brother Todd. It said he's the only one with immortality. What else does it say? Dwelling in the light, which no man can approach unto. It Who says no Jesus is the only one dwelling in the light. Which no man can approach unto, which is what Jesus told you in John 3 and 13. And no man has died in the sin of heaven except the one that came from heaven. We didn't come from heaven. We come from the dust of the earth, brothers and sisters. Right. This is simple stuff. But can you read what you believe? Because we're reading to you what we believe. We believe the Lord going to set his kingdom on his earth. And we believe don't nobody go up to that third heaven. Why do we believe that? Because we reading it to you. Go ahead and finish that, brother. Whom no man have seen nor can see. To whom be honor and power everlasting. Amen. What else do you need? If Jesus say no man done it. And then Paul told you right here. That Jesus is the only one who have immortality dwelling in the light which no man can approach unto, whom no man have seen nor can see? What else do you need? Well, well what about uh, Elijah? You know they're going to say that, right, Brother Todd? You know they're going to say that, right? Yeah. We're going to get to Elijah. 
But let's go hit Genesis 1 real quick so we can break something down and educate the people and edify the people, Brother Todd. Let's go Genesis, my brother. Um, we, I, I, let me, see, yeah, let's go Genesis, uh, one and, uh, you know what? First, let's go second Corinthians. Let's go, let's go second Corinthians first and let's let Paul tell you something else. And then we'll go Genesis one, second Corinthians chapter 12. And we just want two verses, verses one and two, because it is our job to edify the family, to teach you to be instant in season, out of season. And then it's even our job to suggest to you, if you don't believe what we say, do your own research. Prove us wrong. But it ain't no contest about who's right and wrong. We're trying to show you what this book says. That's why we got the scriptures at the bottom of the screen, because we want you to get your book and read along with us. OK, that's what we want you to do. Second Corinthians 12 and one, brother. What did it say? It is not expedient for me to doubtless to glory. I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. So, so the Lord gave Paul. He taught him by revelation for three years. And then he showed him visions. But let, what did he see in this vision right here? Go ahead and read, brother. I knew a man in Christ above 14 years ago. Mm -hmm. Whether in the body, I cannot tell. Or whether out of the body, I cannot tell. God know it. Such an one caught up to the third heaven. Which heaven? The third heaven. See, that lets us know right there that there's more than one heaven, brothers and sisters. That lets you know right there. So look, let's go into Genesis 1. Let's go to Genesis 1. And we're going to pick it up at verse 20. Listen, brothers and sisters. Can you read the things you believe about God and about this Bible? Can you prove them? We started off in 1 Thessalonians where Paul said, prove all things. Listen, we can read to you the things that we believe. We can read them to you. But can you read your stuff? And when I don't I don't really get into too many battles with folks no more. I just say, listen, sister, brother, with all due respect and with all peace and harmony and love. <laughs> read your stuff to me. And I'll come over there and do it with you. I mean, that ain't no hard question, is it, Brother Todd? Not at all. Huh? Simple. That's real. If you, it, right, if you so concerned about me over here in this cult, as you say, mm -hmm. find your stuff in the book that you're doing, write you down a list, come bring it, present it to me, and read them to me, and I'll come over there with you. In fact, I will purchase the Christmas tree. I'll set it up for you. You heard me? <laughs> hey, that's a lot of bold talk because I know it. it's not there. Genesis right. 1 and 20. Go ahead and read. What'd you say, Brother Todd? I didn't say nothing, brother. I'm just laughing over here. <laughs> okay, look. Well, let's go. Genesis 1 and 20. What did it say, brother? And God said, let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving yeah. creatures that have life. Yeah. And fowl that may fly above the earth in the mm. open firmament of heaven. Wait a minute. The birds are going to fly in the open firmament of heaven? Yes, sir. So where the birds fly is in is in heaven? Paul say he saw Jesus ascend up to the third oh, heaven. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So so that's letting us know, brother, there are multiple heavens. Okay, that, that lets us know that. So we have to understand that. So when we start reading things, we can start putting them together. Let's go to Deuteronomy real quick, chapter 10. Because Paul say, hey, he saw Jesus go to the third heaven. Then we see that the birds fly in the firmament of heaven. So, yeah. So if you go to the top of the Sears Tower, well, or the Hancock Tower, hey, you up in, the, you up in one of them heavens. Mm-hmm. So when we read that thing about Elijah, you're going to understand what's going on. But let's read this real quick, Brother Todd. Deuteronomy 10 and 14, because we got to get a witness for Paul, uh, what he said back there about that third heaven. Deuteronomy 10 and 14, what that say, brother? Behold, the heaven and the heaven of heavens is the Lord's thy God. So that lets, us, that lets us know right there is more than one, right? Right. Go ahead and finish that. The earth also with all that therein is. 
And the heaven and earth is in and, and earth is referred to as a heaven in the Bible. When you go and read about the Lord gathering Israel from the four corners of of the heavens, which is the four corners of the earth. OK, so look, let's go into first Kings chapter 22, because we're going to go look at Elijah, because I know somebody saying, well, the Bible said Elijah went to heaven. Don't the book say that? They going they going to say, didn't it say that? But the tight to the lessons title, the night's nice title is Can You Read What You Believe? So let's go first Kings 22. And we gonna we gotta establish some stuff because we're gonna show you another little image. So y'all get ready to say to, to hit your screenshot, okay? First Kings, my brother. We're gonna go to chapter 22 and we're gonna start at verse 44. First Kings 22 and 44. Go ahead and read it, brother. And Jehoshaphat. Made peace with the king of Israel. Mm -hmm. Now the rest of the acts of Jehoshaphat and his might that he showed and how he won. Are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the Kings of Judah? Yes, sir. So watch this. Skip on down to verse 51 and continue. Ahaz Ahaziah, the son of Ahab, began to reign over Israel and Samaria. <laughs> Okay, so look, so we know that Elijah was dealing with Ahab and uh, his wife Jezebel, right? right? So they were his contemporaries. So right as we know when Jehoshaphat went out there against Gilead, uh, Ramah Gilead to war with uh, Ahab, that Ahab got killed. So his son Ahaziah took over in his stead, right? Right. Go ahead. So it says he started to reign over Israel in Samaria in the 17th year of Jehoshaphat. Go ahead and read, brother. King of Judah and reigned two years over Israel. Uh huh. Go and ahead. He did evil in the sight of the Lord and walked in the way of his father and in the way of his mother and in the way of Jeroboam, the son of Nabat, who made Israel to sin. See that? Because see, uh, 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 uh. He, he was a sinful king, but I just went there to show you that because we're going to slide right on into the very next chapter, which is Second Kings. Uh, 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 we're going to go Second Kings chapter two and we're going to pick it up at verse one. So we see that Ahaziah is sitting on the throne and we're getting ready to see what's going to happen to Elijah right here. Go ahead and read, brother. Second Kings two and one. What did it say? And it came to pass when the Lord would take up Elijah into heaven by whirlwind that Elijah went with Elisha from Gilgal. Okay, now skip down to verse 11 and continue. And it came to pass, as they still went on and talked, that behold, there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire and parted them both asunder. And Elijah went up by whirlwind into heaven. Which heaven, Brother Todd, did he go to? It didn't say, did it? But we, heaven. but but we know according to, to what we can read in the Bible, it wasn't the third heaven. Right, had to be that heaven where the birds fly in the open firmaments of heaven, as we just read in Genesis chapter one. Right, right. go ahead and read. And Elisha saw it, and he cried, "My father, my father, the chariot of Israel and the horsemen thereof." Mm -hmm. And he saw him no more. Mm -hmm. And he took hold of his own clothes and rent them in two pieces. Now skip down to verse 15 and continue. And when the sons of the prophets, which were to view at Jericho, saw him, they said, the spirit of Elijah doth rest on Elisha. Mm, so, Elisha so Elisha took over immediately as the priest because the Lord had to kind of, Elijah was scared because uh, he got scared about, uh, about them threats uh, Jezebel threw at him. But go ahead and read. And they came to meet him and bowed themselves to the ground before him. And they said unto him, Behold now, there be with thy servants fifty strong men. Let them go, we pray thee, and seek thy master. So listen, so they told him, listen, listen, we got fifty strong men. Let's go find Elijah. Because they knew he had to be on earth somewhere. Right. They couldn't have gone up to the third heaven. Go ahead and read, brother. Let's peradventure. The spirit of the Lord have taken him up and cast him upon some mountain or into some valley. And he said, ye shall not sin. 
Okay, so now, now I just wanted to point out that Ahaziah was on the throne when this thing happened to Elijah. So now let's go into Second Kings chapter, I mean Second Chronicles chapter twenty-one, because we're gonna prove to you that he was still on this earth, brothers and sisters. Okay, Second Chronicles twenty-one, and let's pick it up, my brother, at verse one. Second Chronicles. 21 and 1, we're going to prove to you that he was still on the earth. 21 and 1, go ahead and read it. Now Jehoshaphat slept with his fathers <laughs> and was buried with his fathers in the city of David. And Jehoram, his son, reigned in his stead. So Jehoram reigned in Jehoshaphat's stead because Jehoshaphat's dead and gone now, right? So now, skip down to verse 11 and continue, brother. Moreover, <laughs> He made high places in the mountains of Judah yeah. and caused the inhabitants of Jerusalem to commit fornication and compelled Judah there too. Uh -huh. And there came a writing to him from Elijah the prophet saying, Wait a minute. So Elijah sent a letter to Jehoram? Right. Watch this, brothers and sisters. I'm going to show y'all this here. And I hope y'all can see this chart. So what I did was... Can you move I, the off there? Oh, yeah, yeah. Let me take that down. Because I want y'all to see this. Yeah. Okay. Look over there where you can see where Ahab is highlighted in yellow. He was the king and he died. And we read how his son Ahaziah took over. And we read how he reigned for two years, right? He reigned from 853 A.D. down to 852 A.D. And if you see over to the right of Ahab and Ahaziah, you'll see Elijah was the priest, he was the prophet right there during the time of Ahab. And right as Ahab died and his son took over, that's when Elisha took over as the prophet or the priest, right? But but we read that Jehoram got a letter from Elijah. But he, when Elijah was taken up, Ahaziah was on the throne. Look at that, brothers. See that 853 to 852? See them years right there? It happened while that brother was on the throne that Elijah got taken up. But some years later, somewhere between 848, look at the pink to the left side of your screen. Look at that pink over there where you see Jehoram reign uh, after Jehoshaphat died from 848 down to 841. He was the one that got the letter. And he had to have been on the throne for a while to even start doing bad stuff, bad enough to get a letter from Elijah. Right. So look, so start at verse 12 again, brother Todd. What that say? And there came a writing to him from Elijah the prophet, saying, mm -hmm. Thus said the Lord God of David thy father, Yes. Because thou hast not walked in the ways of Jehoshaphat thy father, nor in the ways of Asa king of Judah, uh -huh. but hast walked in the way of the kings of Israel, and hast made Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem to go a-whoring, yeah. like, like to the whoredoms of the house of Ahab, mm -hmm. and also has slain thy brethren of thy father's house, which were better than thyself. Go ahead. Behold, with a great plague will the Lord smite thy people and thy children and thy wives and all thy good. So look, that's why I wanted to show you guys. That's why we hit them spots in Kings to show you who was on the throne. And we saw that Ahaziah was on the throne when Elijah got taken up as we read in 2 Kings. Chapter 11, I mean, chapter uh, 21, verses uh, 11 and 12 down off in there somewhere. Ahaziah was on the throne, and we see when he was on the throne, 852 to 853. We read he reigned for two years, but we see Jehoram down here in the pink over to the left from 848 to 841. He got the letter from Elijah. So when you see that Elijah got taken up into heaven based on the other things that we have read to you tonight about there being a third heaven, about the Lord say he created the heaven of heavens and he created the heavens. There are multiple heavens. So if you read Elijah got taken into the into heaven, then you have to ask yourself which one. And being that we know that the birds fly in the open firmaments of the heaven, we know that the angels just came and lifted the brother up and dropped him off somewhere else.
Okay, just like if you go to Acts the 8th chapter after Philip baptized the brother, they took him up into the heavens, but he was seen somewhere else after that day, somewhere else doing something else. Okay, so you so when you have knowledge and understanding, then you see these things, they not they're not mysterious to you and you don't have to speak on them incorrectly, thinking that somebody went to heaven when Jesus told you nobody go there. And then Paul told you don't no man go there. What else do you need? We are trying to show you this stuff. And that's why we believe don't nobody go there because we can read all this stuff we read to you tonight. Can you read to me the things you believe? Can you? And so look. To understand, my brother, it should be simple. It's supposed to be, and we and we and we hope that it is, and we hope we left that picture up there long enough for y'all to get those uh 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 uh, uh you know out. to get yeah. some screenshots or whatever y'all wanted to do, okay? Mm -hmm. So look, uh, let's go into our next spot. Let's go Ephesians chapter five. We go into Ephesians chapter five, my brother, and we are going to pick it up at verse six. Ephesians chapter five. In verse six, and all we trying to do is educate y'all and and, and 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 get you and, and give you some tools where you can tell somebody, hey man, if you believe that, then prove it to me. Read your stuff to me, cause I ain't gotta read nothing to you. I've already done that. We a lot of us have wasted a lot of time. Well, I wouldn't say we wasted the time, but we have spent a lot of time proving our stuff to people. You know what? Fall back. Mm -hmm. You prove your stuff to me. And yep. if you can do that, I'll come over there with you. And we can put in all that. Ephesians chapter 5, my brother. We want verse 6 and 7. What does it say? Let no man deceive you with vain words. Mm -hmm. For because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Mm -hmm. Be not you therefore partakers with them. See, look, he said, don't let nobody deceive you with vain words because we've already showed you where Satan is the deceiver of the whole world. And then he say, because if you do get deceived, the wrath of God is going to come up on you because you, you will end up being disobedient to the word of God because somebody did deceive you and got you to do some stuff that you can't prove. You can't read it. You don't understand it. And all of us have been in churches where you ask somebody something and they say, go, let me ask the preacher. And I've been in churches where I challenged the preacher. Well, I ain't challenged him. I just asked him questions that he didn't even have an answer to. And then when he asked questions that he didn't have an answer to, I opened up the book and answered it for him. And then he said, can you tell us where you read that at again? Yeah. You up there over church getting rich picking pockets your bmw's big your range rover's big and everybody in there eating vienna sausage for for breakfast every day and you don't know no bible let's press on let's go second thessalonians y'all second thessalonians chapter two let's pick it up at verse eight second thessalonians chapter two and verse eight and then just like on clubhouse there's a lot of cats on there running their mouth don't know nothing won't even let you open up the Bible. But can you read what you believe to me? Can you prove what you believe to somebody else, to a co-worker? Huh? Second Thessalonians chapter 2, Brother Todd. We're going to pick it up at verse 8. Second Thessalonians 2 and 8. Go ahead and read it. And then shall that wicked be revealed. Mm -hmm. Whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth. Yes. Destroy with the brightness of his coming. Mm -hmm. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders mm -hmm. and with all deceivableness and unrighteousness in them that perish. You see that? So look, so listen, brothers and sisters. Hey, hey, brother Ezra. No, they not the brother Ezra. They cannot read the stuff that they believe and that they want to buy into, brother. It ain't, it ain't happening. And somebody said, hey, Elijah took the first flight yeah. <laughs> before airplane. And that's all it was, okay? That, that's all it was, okay? That's all it was. But look, so it says right here that, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, why do they perish, Brother Todd? 
because they receive not the love of the truth mm -hmm. and they might be saved and that is the problem i'm telling y'all i was moved by two situations to do this lesson a person say it's it's kind of strange that all these different churches got the same bible do everything different and i was trying to get this person to tell me to elaborate on that comment but they would not but i know why some follow the book and some don't that's the only difference. That's where the line is drawn in the sand. So listen. So he said, because they receive not the love of the truth. And if you don't love the truth, you got yourself a huge problem, ladies and gentlemen. Go ahead and read, brother. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion. Uh-oh, now you got another problem. Since you love to believe lies since you hate the truth since you receive not the love of the truth now you got yourself a bigger problem because the lord god almighty of israel the god of abraham isaac and jacob is going to send you a strong delusion so what will happen brother todd that they should believe a lie so he going to make it where that's all you want go ahead and read that they all might be damned Ooh. Who believe not the truth, mm -hmm. but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Do y'all see that one? He said that every last one of you might be damned who believe not the truth, but you had pleasure in that unrighteousness. And just like we mentioned, just like we mentioned earlier, a uh, 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 brother Todd, yeah. Satan dressed that thing up. He have you serving your flesh. Because, hey, it's a lot of pleasure in sin. We ain't going to even deny that. Right. It's a lot of momentary pleasures in sinning. But, 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 but another thing we say is a moment of pleasure can give you an eternity of some suffering, okay? That's right. And before you get to the eternity of suffering, you have a lifetime of pain. Mm -hmm. Okay? So you have to ask yourself, is it worth it? So now, let's hit this next spot. Let's hit this next spot, Brother Todd. Let's go into uh, Revelation chapter 22. Revelation 22. Because, listen, do you want to believe those lies? Clearly you do. Because we got the truth laid right out in front of you. You got a book. I got a book. Okay? Revelations. You know what? Before we go hit that revelation, brother Todd, let's go hit this one spot right here. Matthew chapter, uh, and then we'll come back and hit that revelation. Let's go Matthew 15 real quick. We just want those first three verses because I want to point out something to the people. Because can, can you prove what you do? Do you, can you read what you believe? That's the title of the lesson. Can you read to me the things you believe and the things you do? Can you do that? Can you defend your God without just running your mouth with your opinion. Can you open up your book or can you go to my book and read it to me? Matthew 15, my brother, verse one, what did it say? Then came to Jesus, scribes and Pharisees, mm -hmm. which was of Jerusalem, saying, mm -hmm. Why do thy disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. Go ahead. But he answered and said unto them, why do ye also transgress the, the commandment of God by your tradition? And see, that is the question. You transgress the commandment of God with your tradition. And then the first thing the people say, well, you ain't got to keep no laws. You ain't got to keep no Sabbath. Mm -hmm. But you keep Sunday, though. Yep. I can read the Sabbath day from the New Testament and the Old, and I keep it. You can't read Sunday nowhere then you tell me you don't have to keep a law, but you keep a law. You keep an unwritten Sunday law based around sun gods and sun worship. You keep that and you can't read it to me. Hmm. Something's wrong with that, Brother Todd. Something, my brother, is wrong with that. You hear what I'm saying to you? Mm -hmm. Something is wrong with that, bro. Hmm. So, so listen. Let's go hit Revelation 22. Because we just read that if you took pleasure in them lies, if you received not the love of the truth, the Lord going to send you a strong delusion so you'll keep on believing them lies. And I'm telling you something, you really don't want to get caught over there in that alley. That's a bad alley to get jammed up in. Because you're going to get stripped down, brother. 
Revelations chapter 22, verse 12, my brother. 22 and 12, what did it say? And behold, I yeah. come quickly. And my reward is with me. Uh huh. To give every man according as his work shall be. Mm hmm. I am Alpha and Omega. Yes. The beginning and the end. Yes. The first and the last. Mm hmm. Blessed are they that do his commandments. Yes. That they may have right to the tree of life. Do y'all see that? And keeping that Sabbath day is one of them commandments. He said that they may have rights to the tree of life. Go ahead and read. And may enter in through the gates into the city. Yes. For without a dog, mm -hmm. and sorcerers, and whoremongers, and murderers, and idolaters, and whosoever loveth, and maketh a lie. Boy, if you loving lies and you making lies, we already read that the Lord going to send you a strong delusion. Mm -hmm. And he going to deal with them people who, who, who would not accept the true word of God. We showing it to you. We're reading to you the things we believe. We believe that you're supposed to have a holy convocation. Every Sabbath day, you're supposed to gather with your brothers and sisters. You strengthen your brothers and your sisters. You get the word of God, okay? You're supposed to do that. We can read that don't no man go to heaven. We can read that, and that's why we believe that. Can you read to me what you believe? And that's tonight's lesson, and we hope somebody was edified, and, and we hope somebody got, got something that they can take somewhere else and, and, and do some work in the vineyard with it. And we thank you all for tuning in in the name of Jesus. Y'all hear me? Yes, sir. And that is it. We thank y'all for tuning in. We hope somebody got some edification. Look, I'm holding the page. I'm, I'm ready to flip somewhere else. I ain't realize we had went through it. Well, hey, guess what, brothers and sisters? Yeah. If y'all got something y'all want us to deal with, put it in the yeah. comment section. Some, some else them Sunday folks deal because I had a long list. We could have done this all night. Yeah, but that we could have, we right. could, we could have done this all night long because they got a lot of stuff they deal with, and ain't none of it in this book. See, I got see, I got my little list right here. Y'all can't see it, but I got my little list of all the stuff they did. We could have went all night. Yeah, yeah, but it was a simple, edifying lesson. My yes, brother. sir. Yes, sir. You know, In Jesus' you... name, praise God. So yeah. look, so look, they 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 got a lot of stuff they deal with, but they can't read none of it to you. I'm none. talking about none of it. Hey, they 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 love to talk and and. and Act like they praising Jesus, but boy, they heart far from the Lord, man. Ain't that in the book say that? <laughs> yes, sir. But see, but see, here's the problem. Here's one of the problems. They go to the church where the preacher gives them a sermon and run his mouth. Mm -hmm. So they get comfortable running their mouth. They think that that's cool and that's okay because their preacher do it. But guess what? The brother that taught me, Brother Bowie, and the rest of them brothers, Brother Andrew, Brother Jeremiah, Brother Greg Taylor, all the rest of them brothers, Steph Dawson, Julius, and we got uh, late Brother Anthony Wright, uh, Brother Mill, all them brothers that right. taught that I learned from, hey, man, them brothers read the book to me. So what I learned early on is, hey, I got to read if I'm going to show it to somebody. That's right. But I also heard Brother Bowie say, hey, if you don't ask him, he ain't going to mention it. And sometimes I get like that. But when I do deal with somebody, hey, what I say to them is, you show me what you're doing mm -hmm. and I deal with that. Now, you prove it to me, though, and then we can deal with it. OK, right. you you show me what you're doing and we'll deal with that. But don't nobody show you nothing because they, cause they realize they have nothing. Just right. like if you didn't study for your test, you haven't been taking notes and studying your notes. When the teacher dropped that quiz on you, the teacher find out you don't know nothing because you ain't been studying and doing nothing. Mm -hmm. Okay? That's right. That's how they find out you don't know nothing. So guess how? I'm, I'm going to show you that you really don't know nothing because I'm going to ask you to show me what you're doing. And sometimes right. people, sometimes people will bring you something, and then you just have to deal with what they have. Right, right, right. Because I had somebody tell me, "I am not about to sit here and argue with you. I ain't got to show you nothing. I can serve the Lord however I want to serve the Lord." And, and you can't do that. Week. And you can't do that. See, 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 see. Just like, just like we pointed out, where the Lord said you can't sacrifice some lame beast to Him. Right. It, it has to be a flawless one. 
You can't just bring no lame beast. We saw how Cain was a tiller of the ground, and he just brought the Lord any old Your kind pain. of any old kind of offering. Where his brother Abel brought the fatlings of the beast that he was raising. You see. So, right. uh, let me see. Uh, what she say? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They they say they jumping around and catching the Holy Ghost, but every time I see an example of somebody, see what they call catching the Holy Ghost. Every time I see that in the Bible, they say that person got an unclean spirit. Mm -hmm. Don't we see that, brother Todd? Right. Yeah. Sister Antoinette Ooh. Simpson. When we see that, when we see that in the book, they say that person got an unclean spirit. Mm -hmm. So that's that. Say, bro, there's a lot of folly out here in the world, man. And people is out here lost, getting cut off and everything. <sighs> man, look, I just heard today that a, a, a person that I knew was living that alternative lifestyle was found murdered. And and wow. they don't and then and this person said they was a priest of God, okay? And was living uh, according to the Bible an abominable lifestyle. The person was found dead, and they don't even have one doggone wow. clue of who done it. But you know, of course, we like justice to get served. Don't mm -hmm. you don't want to hear about nobody getting murdered, man? Right. You don't want to hear about none of that. But hey, man, this is what people gotta understand. You gotta get your life in order. The God that we serve is not no no jelly bean. Rainbow on his chest, powder puff, care bear. Right. right. He is not like that. He told you when he come back, it's going to be a great and a terrible day. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Okay. And, and, and he told you what he do with these false prophets who lie on him and lie on that word. He'll give them that desire to live that alternative lifestyle. So when he busts their heads, he'll be justified in doing it. And I'm not right. just speaking on that particular individual. I'm just saying in general. The books say that you can go to Romans, the first chapter, and read it for yourself. Hmm. So it's a scary thing, and it's just a reminder that you have to get your house in order because you That's know right. what, brother Todd? What that verse said, uh, what Jesus said, hey, uh, my time is not yet, but your time is always. What what verse was that, brother? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> ah, hey, he said it, man, because hey, because and he's telling you the truth. He's trying to let you know that hey, let's go, let's go to uh, uh let's go to that, that verse, man. Let's go, John uh, uh seven, uh, seven, uh, yeah, yeah. Seven and uh, six. Read that verse six. <clears throat> then Jesus said unto them, mm -hmm. My time is not yet come. Yeah. But your time is always ready. You see that? See, listen. See, you can die at any time. So why not have your affairs in order? Why not have your life in order where it's approved of by your maker, your creator? Because you going to go eyeball to eyeball with him sooner or later. That's right. Your resume is going to get laid out and open up sooner or later. Hmm. You might as well get your house in order. Let's go Ezekiel 18 real quick, brother Todd. Let's yeah. go Ezekiel 18 and start at verse 20 because we got to get these people some hope too. Because somebody might be sitting there wondering, well, uh, you know what, uh, I've been doing this and doing that. Hey, no problem. Watch this here. Because the Lord always got something for you. Let's go Ezekiel 18. Let's start at verse 20. 18 and 20, my brother. <clears throat> the soul that sent it. Yeah. It, it shall die. Yep. The son shall not bear the iniquity of the father. Neither shall the father bear the iniquity of the son. Mm -hmm. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him. Mm -hmm. And the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. Of course, go ahead. But if the wicked will turn from all his sins that he have committed, yeah, and keep all my statutes and do that which is lawful and right, mm -hmm. he shall surely live. He shall not die. Do y'all see that? See, the Lord said that if the wicked man turn and start walking right, it says start doing what is lawful. He shall surely live. He shall not die. We talking the second death. Go ahead and read, brother. All his transgressions that he hath committed, they should not be mentioned unto him. Do y'all see that? He said when this person turned right, their transgressions won't be mentioned. Go ahead and read. 
in his righteousness that he hath done, he shall live. Have I any pleasure at all that the wicked should die? Mm -hmm. Say the Lord God, and not that he should return from his ways and live. See, the Lord ain't got no favoritism out there. Ain't no respect of person. Amen. If you want, if you want eternal life, if you want to turn right, then turn right and walk right, and the Lord will acknowledge that, and then he say your sins won't even be mentioned. Mm -hmm. But we have a fair God, brothers and sisters, and he got a just balance. It's not it's not leaning to one side, okay? Read that yeah. next verse. Let's prove it. Go ahead and read. <clears throat> but when the righteous turneth away from his righteousness mm -hmm. and committeth iniquity, yeah. and doeth according to all the abominations that the wicked man doeth, mm -hmm. shall he live. All his righteousness that he hath done shall not be mentioned. Mm -hmm. And his trespass that he hath trespassed. Mm -hmm. And in his sin that he has sinned, mm -hmm. in them shall he die. You see that? See, the Lord is even-handed. A righteous man can turn wicked. His righteousness won't be mentioned. A wicked man can turn righteous, and that, that righteous man's wickedness won't even be mentioned. But look, Brother Todd, we got Sister Dayetta Johnson. She's got a question. She said, explain Romans 10 and 9. Listen, let's go read Romans 10 and 9. Because she said they think all you got to do is confess out your mouth. Hey, it takes more than that, my sister, but we're going to read you some stuff. Read that verse, Brother Todd. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, mm -hmm. and shall believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, mm -hmm. thou shalt be saved. See, here's the thing, yet. I hope you still with us. I hope you still with us. Because if you believe that the father raised Jesus from the dead, then that belief by itself is going to dictate a lot of actions with you. It's going to force you to do some things, okay? So now, let's go 2 Corinthians, Brother Todd, first. Now, ride with us, Sister Johnson, Dayetta. Ride with us. Let's go 2 Corinthians chapter 11, Brother Todd, because you got to ride with us. And we're going to come right back to Romans 10. I want you to write down all of this stuff. I want you to write down all these verses we about to hit. Somebody put that up on the screen. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, and we're going to read verse 10, I mean, uh, uh, verses uh, 3 and 4, and then we're going to skip. Go ahead and read it, brother. But I fear. Less by any means, mm -hmm. as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety. Yeah. So your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. Yes. For if he that come and preacheth another Jesus. See, listen, sister. Somebody can come and preach you another Jesus. Are you confessing that one? Or one of those other ones? Or are you confessing the one that's in this book? Go ahead and read, brother. Whom we have not preached. Mm -hmm. Or if you receive another spirit which you have not received. Go ahead. Or another gospel which you have not accepted. Mm -hmm. You might well bear with it. So the question is, number one, which Jesus are you confessing out your mouth? Mm -hmm. You confessing that fake one that Satan is hiding behind? Or are you confessing this one that's in this book right here? Let me go show you two things about this one that's in this book. Let's go 1 Corinthians 5 and 7. Let's go show you something about this one right here. 1 Corinthians 5 and 7. Because you have to figure that out. Because some people, they ain't talk about this, Jesus. 1 Corinthians 5 and 7, Brother Todd. What that say, brother? Purge out there for the old leaven. Mm -hmm. And she may be a new lump. Yeah. And she are unleavened. Mm -hmm. For even Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Christ is our what, Brother Todd? Our Passover, brother. So, so, so we see that Christ is our Passover, right? Now, let's go Luke chapter 1. Because we're just going to give you a couple of facts about this Jesus. Let's go Luke 1, my brother. Let's pick it up at verse 30. Luke 1 and 30. This is Gabriel coming to Mary. And look at what he's going to tell her. Luke 1 and 30. Read it, Brother Todd. And the angel said unto her, Fear mm -hmm. not, Mary, for yeah. thou hast found favor with God. Mm -hmm. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. Mm -hmm. He shall be great, and shall be called the son of the highest. Mm -hmm. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. One more verse. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. 
and of his kingdom there shall be no end. So now let's go back to where this sister say, Romans 10. Let's go back to where her family is giving her flack about this right here. They giving her flack about this here. And then we're going we gonna to take you somewhere. So we're going to read that verse 9 because that's where she want to go, brother Todd, where they take her. Read that verse, brother. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, uh -huh. and shall believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, yeah. thou shalt be saved. So now, that, so which Jesus are you confessing, though? Watch this here. Skip down and read verse 13, brother. Go ahead. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Okay, so that's kind of like verse 9. But again, the question is, Paul is about to ask you some questions. Paul is about to ask these questions. Go ahead and read, brother. How then shall they call on, in, on him in whom they have not believed? Listen, this Jesus of this Bible says he's Lord of the Sabbath day in Mark chapter 2, verse 27 and 28. Look, do, you, do they believe on that Jesus or they believe on one of them other Jesuses, okay? Do they believe on this one? Go ahead and read, brother. And how shall they believe in him? Of whom they have not heard. Have they ever heard of the Passover Jesus or the Jesus that's going to sit on David's throne and reign over Israel forever? Have they ever heard of that Jesus? That's why we went and read to you in 2 Corinthians chapter 11 that people are going to come teach you another Jesus. Which Jesus are they calling on or confessing? Go ahead and read, brother. And how shall they hear without a preacher? And guess what? If somebody ain't came and showed them this, then I don't know what they dealing with, okay? I'll show you something else about Jesus. They say that's all you got to do. Look, Paul wrote that, right? Didn't Paul write right. Romans 10 and 9? Yes, so listen, Sister Dayetta, you take them to something that Jesus said, okay? We're going to take you two places, and you show them this. Now, you, you, and then you ask them who they got in this Bible that can override Jesus, okay? Let's go to John chapter 14. Of course they believe that other Jesus, but let's go right here. Let's go John 14, and let's read verse 21. John 14, my brother. And read that verse 21, Brother Todd. What that say? He that hath my commandments and yeah. keepeth them. Yeah. He it is that loveth me. Uh-huh. And he that loveth me mm -hmm. shall be loved of my father. Yeah. And I will love him and will manifest myself to him. See, listen. Listen, listen, Sister Dayetta. Jesus said if you love him, you keep the commandments. So if you can confess in his name, then you doing the things that he told you to do. And then we didn't read that verse 15. It said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Mm -hmm. Now watch this here. Let's go, uh, let's go Matthew chapter uh, 19. Because the man going to ask Jesus what it is he got to do to get that eternal life and to get that salvation or to be saved. And let's see what Jesus say. And then you ask them, can Paul override Jesus? All right. You ask them that. Matthew 19 Pick it up at verse 16, brother Todd. What that say? And behold, yeah. one came and said unto him, Good master, yeah. what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? So the and man flat out asked Jesus, What do I have to do? Not to say out of my mouth or believe what I have to do. And what did Jesus say, brother? And he said unto him, mm -hmm. Why callest thou me good? Mm -hmm. There is none good but one. Yes. That is God. Yes. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. So listen, Jesus told you that. You have to do that. The last spot we hit in tonight's lesson, we went to Revelation chapter 22, where it says you got to keep the commandments in order to have rights to the tree of life. We read that. So they want to go. See, everybody always want to go to some Paul wrote to get out of obeying the Lord. And I'm going to show you something else. If you don't know about this one, let's go to 2 Peter, Brother Todd. Because let's go, let's go, let's go show her this. And then you tell them this right here. Everybody always want to run up in Paul's writing like he's the Messiah. Paul ain't died for nobody. Ain't nobody get baptized in the name of Paul. Okay? 2 Peter 3, my brother. Pick it up at verse 15. This is Peter talking about Paul. What did he say? And account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, mm -hmm. even as our beloved brother Paul, also according 
to the wisdom given unto him have written unto you. Yes. As also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood. See, listen, Sister Dayetta, a lot of Paul's writings are hard to understand because he he does this kind of stuff and it's it's crazy. But 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 Peter's about to give you this warning. What else did he say, Brother Todd? Which they that are unlearned and unstable rest. Mm -hmm. As they do also the other scriptures mm -hmm. unto their own destruction. See, they twist Paul's writings around to their own destruction. That's what they're doing because we took you to what Jesus said you got to do to get eternal life. And they took you to what Paul say. So ask him, did you get baptized in the name of Paul? Is Paul your savior? Let's look at what Jesus said. Let's look at, let's look at some red letters. Take them to some red letters. Okay. Take them to some red letters. Uh, did we have another question out here, Brother Todd? Did you see something else? Hey, Sister Dayetta, I hope that helped you out right there. Because they talking about another Jesus. They talking about a whole nother Jesus. Because Paul asked you them questions in Romans 10. How you going to call on one you ain't never believed in? Or deal with one that you ain't never heard? You ain't never heard of this Jesus that we talking about. Right. Huh? So, okay, my sister, you good. Okay, cool. So, um, let me see if we got anything else. Nah, that was it. That's all I saw out there, my brother. Oh, yeah, Brother Drake. Hey, man, you got to, Brother Drake, you got to deal with that, man. You got to take them to some red letters, brother. Mm -hmm. See, see, they'll Jesus you to death. Jesus, 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 but they'll take you to something that Paul said. And say, man, you believe in Jesus so hard, let's go look at something he said. Mm -hmm. And you take them to Matthew 16. You take them to those places that he said in John 14, if you love me, keep my commandments. You take them to Revelation 22, even when those letters are read, brother. You take them to Revelation hey. 14 and 12 where it defines what a saint is. Okay? And then at the end of the day, say, look, man. If you want to serve your flesh, knock yourself out. Nobody got time to argue with you. Right. That's right. Just oh, she said they don't want to they don't want to keep the Sabbath. But but look, but look, sister Dayetta. Don't they keep Sunday though? Mm -hmm. They keep Sunday. But they but they don't want to keep what's written. See, we can read the Sabbath just like we did in tonight's lesson. We read about it multiple places. We kind of tried to show you and give you some understanding where this Sunday, what this Sunday stuff is about. You say you can't keep the Sabbath, but you keep Sunday. And I mean you keep it. Them Sunday worshipers, they keep Sunday better than these truth. No, these people with the truth keep the Sabbath day. Ain't that and that's a testimony in itself. Mm-hmm. You hear what I'm saying? Oh, uh, it's just Missy putting the scriptures up there. That was Second Peter three and uh, 15, fifteen and sixteen. 15. Yeah, yeah. Hey, uh, 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 hey, Sister Dayetta, are you in a city where uh, there's an Israel of God? Okay, well then, hey, do your thing, sister. Show up there and do you. And let your light shine. That's all I can suggest to you. Because guess what? I can promise you, you're not going through anything the rest of us ain't going through. You hear what I'm saying? Because we all got the knucklehead family members that want to kick against what we do. But just like the title of this lesson, can you read what you believe? If you believe on Jesus... Why you can't live according to the stuff that he's saying? Why you got to tell me some of Paul's stuff? A man that a man that went to Jesus mm -hmm. and asked for him to remove that thorn out of his side, and the Lord said, "Hey, my salvation is sufficient for you, sir." Right. So if Paul's all that powerful, if he's there, God, why he can't heal himself, huh? Mm. Go to Jesus. So Christian got a got a question. What you got? <laughs> hey, 
And to this person that, uh, what's this person say? What is sexual sin? Victor Holly? Hey, Victor, you're going to go have to holler at somebody at your local uh, Israel of God and y'all talk about that. We don't want to get into that tonight. Because mm -hmm. the last time we got into some marriage <laughs> stuff, it was it was a big blow up behind that. Yes, sir. So, so you go talk to one of the brothers at the class you go to if you go to one. Okay, Kristen, if you got a question, what is Oh, here she say, was Elijah a spirit being when he wrote that letter? <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> Let's go back and read it again, Brother Todd. Let's go back and read it again. Let's go Genesis 1 and read verse 20 and 21. Okay, Kristen, ride with us. Get your notes out. Genesis 1, Brother Todd, pick it up at verse 20. Go ahead and read. And God said, let the waters bring forth abundantly mm -hmm. the moving creature that have life yes. and fowl that may fly above the earth in the yes. open firmament of heaven. Okay, so the first thing we point out to you is that the birds fly in heaven. When you see a bird fly across your yard, he's in the heaven. That's one of the heavens, okay? So we and we went we went to Second uh, 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 Corinthians and we read to you where Paul said he saw Jesus go to the third heaven. So let's go read that, brother Todd. Let's let let's just bring it all the way back. Second Corinthians chapter twelve. We're gonna read verse one and two. One and two. Go ahead and read it, brother. It is not expedient for me, doubtless, to glory. Yes. I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. Mm -hmm. I knew a man in Christ above 14 years ago. Mm -hmm. Whether in the body, I cannot yeah. tell. Or whether out of the body, I cannot tell. Uh -huh. God, God knoweth. Such an one caught up to the third heaven. So he caught up to the third heaven. So now let's go to Second Kings, Brother Todd. And let's see where Elijah was taken up. Okay. We go on Second Kings. Mm -hmm. We're going to the second chapter, but we're going to pick it up at verse 11 when it happened. Mm -hmm. Second Kings chapter 2 and verse 11, my brother. Go ahead and read that. And it came to pass as they still went on and mm -hmm. talked that, behold, there appeared a chariot of fire mm -hmm. and horses of fire mm -hmm. and parted them both asunder. Mm -hmm. And Elijah went up by whirlwind into heaven. So did it say that Elijah died? Didn't read that. Did it say he turned to a spirit being? No, sir. He got taken up into heaven, which we've already read to you where the birds fly is considered a heaven. When I get on an airplane and I leave Oakland, California, and I go to Houston, I went up into the heaven. And the people in Oakland ain't going to see me no more for a few days. Like mm -hmm. them brothers didn't see Elijah no more. But I wanted you to skip down, Brother Todd, to verse 16 and see what these brothers said. Go ahead and read it. And they said unto him, Behold now. There be with thy servants 50 strong men. Mm -hmm. Let them go. We pray thee and seek thy master. Yes. Let's peradventure the spirit of the Lord have taken him up and cast him up on some mountain. You see that? So they so they already know that he's, he's still a live man. He ain't no spirit being, and he ain't in the third heaven. They they know ain't no man going up to the third heaven. We read that in 1 Timothy 6. We read it to where Jesus said it in John 3 and 13. So, no, Elijah was still alive. He wrote that letter to that brother, okay? Look, let's go to Acts chapter 8, brother Todd. Let's go Acts 8. Let's go Acts 8. See, sometimes people people have said something to us so many times, we start believing the stuff. Mm -hmm. That's why I always give the example, hey, if I pull up in front of your house in my car and I stand on my hood and I yell out to the whole neighborhood, my name is George the Great, and I get in my car and drive off. I do that every day. For 365 days this year, and I do it every day for 365 days that next year. By the time them two years is over, everybody in your neighborhood going to call me George the Great. Mm -hmm. But my name is James. But they heard George the Great so much, that's what they call me. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You hear this stuff enough, you start to believe it. But can you prove it, though? So listen, we going to Acts chapter 8. 
And we're going to deal with Philip right here. Right? Watch this here. Mm-hmm. Um, pick it up at verse, uh, rah, 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 rah. verse 37. What that say, brother? And Philip said, if thou believest with all thine heart, mm-hmm. thou, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God. Go ahead. And he commanded the chariot to stand still. And they went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and mm-hmm. he baptized him. Uh huh. And when they were come up out of the water, the spirit of the Lord caught away Philip, that the eunuch saw him no more. Now, see, that's the same thing that happened to Elijah. The spirit of the Lord grabbed the brother, right, and took him away that the eunuch didn't see him no more. But go ahead and read, brother. And he went on his way rejoicing. Go ahead. But Philip was found at Azotus. Mm-hmm. And passing through, he preached in all the cities till he came to Caesarea. You see that? So look, sister, just like Elijah was taken away and he wrote that letter to the brother. Same thing happened here. Philip was taken away. But he was spotted somewhere else after that, still handling God's business, working the vineyard. So, no, Elijah was not a spirit being. She OK, she, got she says she got it now. She okay. Understand. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Okay. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. Man. Hmm. Let me see. Uh yep, yep, yep. Oh, I yeah. see your sister Felicia. How are you? Baton Rouge in the building. Yes, My sister. Let me see. Uh <sighs> Mm-hmm. Hey, you right, brother Drake. Right. Tell that brother to show you where Jesus rose on Sunday, man. Tell him to prove it to you. See if he can see that. Okay. I don't see no more questions, brother. Nah, that's <laughs> it. I'm about to get in this kitchen, my brother. Hey, you too. Yes, sir. Hey, y'all. Again, um. We thank you for tuning in. We ask that you like, share, subscribe to the channel. Let us read together broadcast. Remember, Brother Kevin, say what's up to the brother. If you friends with him on Facebook, send him an inbox. Let him know you're thinking about him. You're praying for him. Uh, you know, and, uh, and, uh, and, and let's remember all our brothers that's traveling this coming Sabbath, working in the vineyard diligently with sure fire commitment also brother garvin coming out here to the bay area okay. we're gonna be happy to see the brother uh right. and he you know um and you know pray for that brother for some safe traveling and some good health okay so hey y'all it's a pleasure to be with you um we don't see any more questions uh so on that note brother todd Oh, you got one more question that popped up in there. What is it? Uh, what do you say to a brother that constantly refers to King David and Bathsheba? Uh, relationship as a way to justify adultery. That's all that is. Uh, you can't justify adultery. Mm-hmm. Listen, brother. Everybody that commit a sin don't die on the spot. Every time a person die a commit a sin, they don't die on the spot because we just read in Ezekiel, I mean turquoise pearl. We just yeah. read in Ezekiel 18 it said when a righteous man, when a wicked man turned from his sin, right? Look, brother Ty, go Ezekiel 18. We gonna hit that, then we gonna hit something else about David. Ezekiel 18, because we read that, right? And we right. know that David did that one that one injustice because mm-hmm. he stacked some sin on top of sin. As a matter mm-hmm. of fact, he right. had he had coveting in there. He had adultery up in there. Right. He had murder up in that thing. Okay. Mm-hmm. So now let's go Ezekiel eighteen. Now watch this, brother Todd. Pick it up at verse. Uh, let's go twenty seven and twenty eight. Again, when the wicked man turneth away from his wickedness that he hath committed, and doeth that which is lawful and right, uh-huh. he shall save his soul alive. Yes. Because he considereth and turneth away from all his transgressions that he hath committed. Mm-hmm. He shall surely live. He shall not die. Mm-hmm. Yet now, said, go ahead. Okay. Yet said the house of Israel, 
the way of the Lord is not equal. Mm -hmm. O house of Israel, are not my ways equal? Are not yes. your ways unequal? See, look, watch this here. Go, let's back up to brother to verse 21, uh, 21 and 22. But if the wicked will turn from all his sins that he have committed mm -hmm. and keep all my statutes and do that which is lawful and right, he shall surely live. He shall not die. Mm -hmm. All his transgressions that he have committed, they shall not be mentioned unto him. Right. And his righteousness that he have done, he shall live. So look, we can read what David did that thing with Uriah and Hittite's wife, mm -hmm. but we can't find no more sin on David after that. The Lord dropped the sword in his house, right. caused him a whole lot of heartache with his son Abnon getting killed by his other son Absalom. Mm -hmm. And before that, Abnon raped one of David's daughters. So, I mean, and then Joab, David's nephews or whatever, they turn around and kill Absalom. Mm -hmm. David's son, after David told them not to do it. So David got his uppings. He got his he, he, he got his punishment from doing what he did, and the Lord told him he was going to do that. But there's another script in this Bible. Somebody know that scripture where it says, uh, where uh, 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 David and Josiah and Hezekiah walked right before the Lord, but except David had that one flaw. What verse is that? Let me see what that is. Because, uh, because hey, we can acknowledge that David did have that one little flaw. Okay? Mm -hmm. Let me see. I got it somewhere right here. Let me see. Boom, 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 boom. Uh, okay. It's 1 Kings uh, 15 and 5. Let's go there. 1 Kings 15 and 5. 1 Kings 15 and 5, brother. Let me see. Mm -hmm. 15 and 5 read that because David did that which was right in the eyes of the Lord mm -hmm. and turned not aside from anything that he commanded him on all the days of his life save only in the matter of Uriah the Hittite and there you go uh -huh. so 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 the Bible doesn't justify what David did brother it's pointed out right I mean whoever this person is it's pointed out right here that that was something that the Lord didn't like what David did it does not justify it at all okay mm -hmm. that's right so you know uh let me see what else we got. Brother Jeff down there in Birmingham. Peace and blessings, brother. Keep working with Brother Brooks for me, my brother. Stay with the brother. Y'all stay with the brother. Yes, sir. And guess what? Dave Brown said, yeah, David did pay for them sins, okay? So, uh, so, so I don't see no more questions, Brother Todd. All right, my brother. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Uh, let me see. Let me see. I don't see nothing else. Right. Okay. Yes, sir. Get well, brother Kevin. Super producer. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> so the question tonight, people, can you read what you believe? And we hope we gave y'all some stuff. Turquoise pearls. Are you still with us? Yeah, to just say thank you. I didn't think that it did. Oh, okay, cool. Great. Okay. Praise God. Okay. Right. Okay. Great, great. Praise God. Okay, so look, Brother Ty. Brother Ty, can you go and read the Lord's Prayer and take us on out of here, brother? Yes, sir. Hey, listen, y'all. Peace. Much love. Peace and blessings. Y'all have a great Sabbath, okay? Go ahead, Brother Ty. All right. Our Father, which art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. And the power. And the glory forever. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.